Once upon a time, vans and MPVs were boring boxes on wheels that you bought because you needed to and not because you wanted to. Times have changed a lot since then. This G50 right here is a very practical vehicle, but it is also a lot more than just that. Whether you like the design or not, you definitely cannot accuse it of looking boring. Especially in this Roland purple paint job. This is a vehicle that's designed to stand out. Also, the interior is one of the nicest in any MPV in this segment. Maxus is a pretty new brand here in the country, but they're backed by the Ayalas, so they have pretty stable footing. Like MG, it was originally a British brand that was bought by Psych Motors. Psych Motors is one of the largest companies in China. They currently have 8 branches in the Philippines, and I'm pretty sure they'll be putting up more soon. Anyway, enough about the brand, let's talk about this G50. Let's start with the exterior. The front of the G50 looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. It kind of looks like Megatron, but in a business suit. It looks intricate, it looks aggressive, but it's done in a way that is still classy looking. It has this massive grill with long straight horizontal lines. It has this subtle lip, which adds just the right amount of aggressiveness to the front. And you see these air vents right here? They're actually real air vents. The G50 has LED headlamps. There's a lot of chrome at the front, but it's done in a tasteful way. It doesn't look tacky. From the side, you can more clearly see its van-like proportions. People have been comparing this to the Innova, but I think it looks more like an Ford. The B, C, and D pillars have all been blacked out, giving the illusion that it has a floating roof. The window line is accented by this chrome trim, which goes all around the car, and it looks like it goes through both daylights. Like most vans, it has a pretty boxy cross-section, which is the ideal shape for maximizing interior space. The premium variant has a power tailgate. Now, I don't have the exact volume figure, but visually, it looks like it has at least as much space as the Innova. On the sides, you have these character lines, which add a bit more three-dimensionality to what would otherwise be a flat side. It has 17-inch wheels. They're painted in gunmetal. Overall, the tasteful use of chrome, the appropriately sized wheels, and the floating roof make it look a bit more premium than other MPVs and vans in its class. Okay, so first impressions, this is a very luxurious looking interior. Uh, in terms of design, in terms of materials, and in terms of toys, this looks and feels like it belongs to a more expensive car. So I've been staring at this for about 15 minutes now and I'm still not bored. There's plenty of detail for your eyes to absorb. Uh, the first thing that draws your attention is this huge 12.3 inch screen. It is one of the largest floating screens that I've seen on a vehicle. It is absolutely massive. So almost everything is covered in high quality materials. This is soft touch. This is soft touch. This is leather. You have red stitching on it. Aluminum, aluminum. And you have these um, metal accents around the shifter. They look like they're straight out of a sci-fi movie. Uh, the seats look quite premium. They're covered in thick leather. It's a two-tone design. The center is red and you have red stitching on it. And then you have this uh, metal accent here, which makes it look even more premium. You'd think that Maxus would put some sort of badging here, but there is no badging. When I first saw photos of the Maxus G50, 
I thought these were carbon fiber, but this looks a lot better. And it has some sort of holographic uh, pattern on it. You have this huge panoramic sunroof. It extends all the way to the back. Headroom is, that's almost isang dangkal of headroom. You have a wireless charging port for your phone, which is something that you would not expect to find in a vehicle in this price bracket. Over here you have two USB ports and a 112 volt outlet. You have single zone climate control. The steering wheel is leather covered. Uh, you have mattress badging on it. You have aluminum accents. It has a flat bottom. In terms of design, it has a retro futuristic look to it. Um, so the Maxxis G50 has uh, an electronic parking brake without a hold. You have a leather wrapped and padded center armrest. No USB ports underneath. Okay, so I'm now at the second row. Um, the room is okay. The front seat is adjusted to my height. Um, headroom almost feels unlimited. Over here you have controls for the aircon. You can adjust the fan speed and you can also turn it on and off. Down here you have uh, one power outlet and one USB port. And this is something that you also see on the Innova. Oh, there you go. So this is a food tray. Um, it does wobble a bit, but if you're stationary, it's a good place to put your food. You also have a notch here for your cup. And I guess you could put your laptop here if you want to work. And you can also move the front seat forward. So over here you have two cup holders. Okay, so the easiest way to access the third row is through the right side of the vehicle. Because it's easier to move the second row seat forward. Okay, so let me just adjust my pants so you don't see anything offensive. Now, I've never found it easy to get into the third row of any vehicle, and it is the same here. It's an exercise in flexibility for me. Getting out is just as tricky, but I'm sure more flexible people will have no trouble getting in and out. It is quite spacious here. Legroom is pretty good, and my knees are at a comfortable angle. Headroom is pretty good. I have about two inches of headroom. But they weren't kidding when they said you could fit three people here. Although one person might have to be a bit on the slim side. But yeah, this is actually one of the most spacious third row seats that I've been in. And that includes bigger uh, mid-sized SUVs. When you open the hood of the G50, it's like you have another hood because almost everything is covered in plastic. Anyway, I can't really see much here, but according to the spec sheet, it has a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. Now, don't let that low displacement fool you. The G50 produces 167 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. That is 31 horsepower and 67 newton meters higher than the gas powered the Nova. The engine is coupled to a 7 speed DCT. Unlike the Innova and the Avanza, the G50 is based on a unibody chassis and it's front wheel drive. Driving the G50 feels like you're driving a large crossover. Unlike the Innova and the Avanza, which are based on a truck chassis, the G50 is based on a unibody chassis, so it feels a bit more refined. NVH levels are pretty good. The ride is quite comfortable, even with just two people on board. Steering is very light. Um, it is electronically assisted. It doesn't feel completely numb though. There is a bit of feedback to it. The G50 has this feature where you would get a video feed of your left or right blind spots when you activate either turn signal. But at least on this test unit, the video feed is in vertical orientation and I can't figure out how to 
get it into landscape mode. But I'm pretty sure there's a way to do that. In sport mode, the transmission holds onto the gears a little bit longer. It, it can be a bit jarring if you're not used to it because sometimes it would shift at 3000 RPM even if you're not applying much throttle. Power is sufficient. It is not sluggish. In fact, as far as MPVs or VATs are concerned, this might be the fastest one that you can buy, unless you get enough fart. The power is good enough for your daily commute, it is good enough for overtaking, and it is good enough for your trip to Baguio. It probably won't feel underpowered unless you're drag racing, in which case you probably should have bought a different vehicle. Because of the length of the vehicle, you'd expect the turning radius to be wide, and it is, but not as wide as I expected. I was able to do that U-turn in three and a half lanes. I've had sedans that had a similar turning radius. There is a bit of body roll, but that is expected from a van, and it's not as bad as on body-on-frame MPPs like the Innova. In terms of consumption, it can do 8 kpl in the city and about 13 to 15 on the highway. For a van, those numbers are not bad. The G50 has a top-down camera. It helps a lot with parking the car. It is not as crisp or as fancy as the ones that you find in the Geely Coolre and the Ford Territory. But those are crossovers. This is an MPV, and to my knowledge, no other MPV in the Philippines has a 360 camera at this price. The Maxxis G50 has three variants. This one right here is the premium. It is the top of the line variant, and it sells for 1,288,000 pesos. Uh, this is the base model. It sells for 1,088,000 pesos. It has fabric seats, 16 inch wheels. It doesn't have a 360 camera and a panoramic sunroof, but the interior still looks nice. In terms of pricing, the G50 Premium is about the same price as the Innova E Gas. Now, both vehicles have their pros and cons, but in terms of interior quality and features, the G50 is competing at a much higher level. We used to see MPVs as utilitarian vehicles. If you got leather seats, that would be considered a luxury already. You get a lot more than just leather seats on the G50. In terms of luxury and refinement, it beats the competition by a huge margin. Maybe in the next couple of months, the competition will step up, and maybe the G50 is just a preview of things to come. But for now, if you want practicality, luxury, and affordability in one package, this might be your best choice. So what do you think? Is it worth your money? If not, type down in the comments below which MPV you would rather have. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Please click on like and subscribe, and I promise to deliver more honest car reviews.